Hello and welcome everyone. A new episode of Score Sheet. As usual, plenty of sports items. And we are going to focus on what happened last week in addition to the Super Cup. We do have also some news about the Confederation Cup in which Al Masri of Port Said was there in Nigeria to start their journey there. We do have some congratulations to our volleyball team, the under 20 of Al Ahli, as they booked their ticket in one of the most important continental championships we do have a lot and we do have a very special guest so right after the short break i'm going to be back so stay tuned only on nile tv international Welcome back. As I said that we do have uh, a sports analyst and a sports expert when it comes to uh, the uh, sports management, uh, uh, Mr. Mohamed Misbah. Thank you very much for Thanks being with us, sir. Thank you. And we are going to start immediately as we do have, as usual, plenty of headlines which were published uh, this week. And we are going to start with you made people happy. Al Sisi tells Egypt football team. The Egyptian national team was received on Monday by President Abdel Fattah Al Sisi in the Cairo Airport Stadium VIP Hall one day after losing 2 1 to in the 2017 African Cup of Nations final. I extend to you my utmost respect. You made people happy. You did well, Al Sisi told the team after posing with them for a photo at the airport. A full thank you to you all. You will accomplish a lot more for yourselves and for Egyptians in the future. The team flight back to Cairo from Gabon was delayed for three hours, but when they were received by the head of a state, I think all the exhausting hours, I think they vanished. Uh, first, have you expected that President Sisi is going to make this gesture and to receive himself the delegation of our national team right from Gabon? Actually, it was a surprise for me because uh, for sure we appreciate what they did, but uh, sometimes a president just uh, believes in the winner mm -hmm. or the cup uh, holder, I can say. So it was a surprise for me that he uh, meeting them in the airport and uh, it was something actually nice that He's meeting them and encouraging them because I think his aim is uh, that our team to be in the World Cup. Yeah, so we all hope so. Yeah, it's kind of preparation. But tell you something, when I knew that President Abdel Fattah Sisi went himself to the airport to receive our national team and to tell them thank you, this big thank you was that they were the reasons behind uniting the Egyptians behind letting the Egyptians go to the coffees, to the streets, to celebrate, to demonstrate or to have a demonstration of love to their country, even if it is only football, and to send this message to the whole world that we can be in millions in cafes and in the streets even without having the slightest fear of, of doing this yes. for a whole month, I think. Yeah, actually, you are exactly right that this is one of the objectives of sports in general, that it's create happiness mm. for the people in the country, but uh, it should include another message that uh, while we are appreciating a lot what you did and we really uh, loved what you do uh, for your country, but we can't forget that uh, next time you need to be the winner. This sure. is actually 
the message need to have two messages at the same time. Because yeah. the history believes in the winner. I, I don't like to, to say that we didn't achieve. We achieved a very good result by coming second. And this is what reflects a lot of positive things we can mention. But at the end of the day, the history book, you got to remember who was the winner of the cup. This is sure. the message need to be uh, for them. And I think it's delivered in, in a smart way uh, to the players. Yeah. But tell you something regarding this edition in specific of the AFC was filled with surprises. Yes. I mean, many people thought that Ghana, for example, is going to be the black horse of, of this edition. Senegal were, uh, were even nicknamed as the uh, African Barcelona. Uh, with the no uh, miss uh, passes, for example, yes. uh, to move to Mali and to how they were that much fit and, and, and well built, there were also another surprise. And m most of the Egyptians, they wouldn't even dream that we are going to yes. go to the finals. So a lot of surprises in this edition. Any explanation? Explanation? First, we, we expect the only team, I'm sorry for them, is Senegal. Yeah. Uh, because they, they are uh, one of the teams that are well prepared. They have fit. They have a good coach, so the result is not in their favor. The surprise comes from uh, North Africa, I can say. Yeah, Algeria, sure. Morocco, and Tunisia, because they're not prepared well for uh, the competition. And the focus for players is not only in the competition. Mm -hmm. It's between the clubs they are playing in as a professional player yeah. and the nation team. So this is actually one of the major uh, conflict blows. and yes. blows actually yeah. happened for this and it's, it's one of the reasons uh, making them stressed because they're coming for their clubs and sometimes they're afraid if they face any tough situations they need to return back safe all this making them scared and our expectation for Algeria for example that they can, they can, they can do well but this is I can <laughs> say the normal curve for, for, for a national team <laughs> they go up and sometimes they go down and mm -hmm. I expect Algeria to return back it's not only just uh, maybe in the World Cup, but they will turn back because this is a normal care. We need just need this kind of a smart treatment for them that they return back to uh, the good position. African teams is the same, or, 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 or uh, national teams is the same every time because they are not. There's all the time a transitional period yeah. in which the um, a generation or most of, of uh, one generation to retire or to quit and to yes. uh, to give the place or to to uh, to make the place vacant for others to yes. fill these positions. That's true. When this harmony is on, then it's going to be great for for this team or the other. But That's without true. this harmony, the case is going to be as we have seen with Ghana and. Unfortunately, I should say that we were beaten by uh, Cameroon, by a team of which seven yes. international key players refused to go because of money. Yeah, that's true. Uh, returning back, I'm totally agree with what you mentioned. And for African team, they lack the, I can say, the organizing or the process or the system for them. For example, Mali. Mali is, is a very strong team, mm -hmm. but they, they, they didn't find the, the right coach. He can put them in the right place, making a, a, a right treatment for them. To, this is actually not nowadays challenge in Africa. It's, 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 it's uh, reflecting what happened in the country itself in the football. To reach levels they are organized and need to achieve, this is one of the challenges. While they have a lot of competence to do that, mm -hmm. I mean, they can achieve better if they're more organized than that. And one of the major reasons that they're it's not up to our expectation because uh, the, everything was not that up to the standard, I can say. Mm. The field itself, the stadium, the everything. The fields were exactly. too bad. Exactly. Too bad. Exactly. The environment for the fo football player is very important to sure. achieve. And when you used to play in uh, uh, London or, for example, Amsterdam, whatever you are playing as a professional player, and you're going to such type, it's something that's very tough, even you are originally born and grown in those countries, mm. but it's very tough because you used to play in, I can say, a right atmosphere for, for the football sure. itself. So it's reflecting badly, and we, we heard a lot of negative feedback about that, that we are not able to achieve as expected because it's not uh, organized. Yeah. I, I can understand that in Africa there is a challenge of organization such mm. type, but I can say there is a minimum standard. And this coaching issue also is very important. We are going to, uh, to return to it later in the episode. But to continue with our press, we are on the right track, says Egypt coach Hector Cooper. Pharaoh's coach Hector Cooper said on Thursday he is keen to build on his side's success in the recent African Cup of Nations, insisting the team is on the right track. Egypt, 
produced a convincing performance during the Nations Cup, but unfortunately they failed to win the African title after losing 2-1 to Cameroon in the tournament's final. On what basis Hector Cooper is saying so? We are on the right track. This is a very big word. Yep, yeah, because as we discussed before, we're in the same topic. Mm -hmm. Cooper have a kind of agreement. Uh, so his agreement not included that he should win uh, the cup. And those people treating with the KPIs or what's the key performance indicator for my job. Mm -hmm. So his job that I exceeded my expe the expectation. He, this is the time or his reference of saying that, that my, the, the deal that I should only be in the competition. Now, I reached the final, so I did a great job. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the challenges for non-Egyptian, I, I can say, Cook, because he don't know the Not only expected. this, because if Hector Cooper is going to depend on his results, then he is also doing great in the World Cup qualifiers. Yeah, and he, he believed in that, exactly. He believed in that. He believed that my number is doing very well, so I'm in the right track. Let me put my question in other words. Do you think that this way is going to lead Egypt to more success into the World Cup qualifications? A yes or no question? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Taking you to Egypt's Ramadan Subhi, who creates goal at Stoke City, uh, beating Crystal Palace. Egypt's Ramadan Subhi dished out an assist to help Stoke City claim another 1-0 win over Crystal Palace in the Premier League on Saturday. The Egyptian player made a rare start after returning from international duty with Egypt and made a fine impact, causing constant menace to Crystal Palace defenders with his tricky trickery on the left. And moving to another pharaoh uh, outside who is in Nini this time. And to speak about his coach, we all love Vanegar, says Arsenal midfielder in Nini. Mohamed in Nini said he and his teammates are not bothered by any talks surrounding the future of Arsenal manager Vanegar following Saturday's 2 0 victory over Hull City. And today, also, Mohamed Salah did great, and yes. he also had an assist to, to, uh, to score a goal in the 2-0 uh, victory yes. of AS Roma in the Calicio. Yes. Well, the th those three are such examples. Yes. Uh, here, I'm not going to talk about exhaustion. I'm not going to talk about to start with or not to start with. But the three, when they returned back to their clubs, they did great. Would you please elaborate on them? To, to be fair and to divide it to, to different uh, personality, let us start with Ramadan. Ramadan was not, uh, he didn't play all the, uh, the games. So he shouldn't be uh, exhausted. He, he was playing. Jet lag is enough. I agree, but uh, the fitness itself, he, he should be better than I mean, others. Gabon, Cairo, Cairo, England in 48 hours? I agree, but at least he didn't play all the matches yeah. compared with Salah. Sure. So, Ramadan, actually, he's, I believe that the gentleman can, can achieve more and more. I think he needs to build a better relationship with the coach. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm saying that the guy needs to be convinced that he's the person. The guy is know. only 19. But we... About well, 20. No. I mean, uh, we should take into consideration the age. I d at I, least it's a factor. I disagree in that because when you are talking about it, uh, there's a money talks. So mm -hmm. they paid him uh, as he's 20 or 25. They don't care. So... While you get the return, which is the money for that, you should act professionally. The, the, uh, in the UK, they don't care if he's 19 or 20. They care that we paid him six or eight million dollars. So mm -hmm. he, he needs to achieve that. Because I think building a relation, building a relation in football is very important. Mm -hmm. That the guy believe that in the tactical level, Ramadan is not listening to the coach a lot. So because sometimes we think that he just he's not a good guy. He's not. All those people thinking professionally. Mm -hmm. He's not sure. listening to what I'm asking him to do. Mm -hmm. So he'll not be a main player in the next match. This is for Ramadan because I think the guy have a great future if he's just focused. And I like that he's disciplined in UK when he, he traveled there. That Can we just have a little comparison between what you're saying, between Ramadan and his coach, and between Salah, uh, Salah's experience in Chelsea? Yes. yes. Okay. Then the relationship That's between... True. Uh, a coach and, and the players is very important in the standard yes. or the level the player is going to give exactly. in his performance on, exactly. on the ground. And, and, and the opposite side, Nini, is a totally different case because he built a relationship and he listened exactly to what the coach And he is, is very smart in choosing his words exactly. when it comes 
exactly. to vanity, exactly. to his to So his he built a relationship, allowed him. Sometimes in Arsenal, he's not the hero. Mm. But for the coach, who is the most important, he's the hero. Mm. So such type of mentality, maybe, we could, maybe Nini did it <clears throat> with uh, intention or not, I don't know. But this is the reality. Salah is a different case because, as you mentioned, Salah is an experienced guy and he's already going there as a star. Mm -hmm. So where you are coming from, Chelsea, who is the ranking uh, higher than uh, yeah. uh, Roma, yes, so, Roma, so it's his, his position is different. And now he, he is the person they're relying on him because he's giving them a reason. Mm -hmm. But for, for, for Ramadan, because sometimes we are not going in a deep, or a, or a deep I can say, justification of why this happened. Sometimes we need to think because this will be a part of coaching sure. for, for them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because sometimes he don't like him. Those people, <coughs> they, they have one objective, to make a success in their business. It's not about like or dislike. It's about mm -hmm. if he's fit or not, or he's listening to the advice. I think if there is a people close to those players, need to explain that to them, as in maybe a uh, manager for him or a coach or mentor, whatever, but they need to give them. But it's, it's very good for Salah, uh, what, what he did today, because... Yeah. He's the person who's really exhausted. He traveled and played all the matches almost. And but you know, psychically, the way he was received in, in, uh, in, the, uh, yeah. in, in Italy, whether by fans or by his That's teammates, uh, the way AS Roma on their Arabic website were That's dealing true. with the matter, the way his teammates were, uh, were cheering for him while he was in, in Gabon, I think this, this was... Make a difference. Uh, yeah. uh, this made a difference, yeah. yes. And since we were talking about the coaching staff, the coach of Ghana, we all knew that he had, there's, there was something wrong or disputes or differences between yes. him and the Ghanaian uh, yeah, right. uh, uh, Football Federation and also the players even before going to the uh, African Cup of Nations. Maybe this was one of the main reasons behind uh, Ghana's standard. But... We do have a statement here, and I'd like you to uh, analyze it. We are not in a rush to appoint a coach. Ghana Football Association. Ghana Football Association's Vice President George uh, Afri revealed on Thursday that the organization was in no hurry to appoint a successor to Black Stars coach Avram Grant, who is set to leave his post by the end of February. The former Chelsea manager took over as Ghana coach back in December 2014, one month before the 2015 Nations Cup Equatorial Guinea, guiding the Black Stars to the final, where they lost also to <coughs> the Ivory Coast or Cote d'Ivoire on penalties. I think this is something we need to focus on because uh, this is not in our favor, mm. because we will still have a competition against Ghana. Yeah. So after thinking the gentleman. <coughs> Maybe we'll find a stronger, I don't know, the new guy. Mm. They're thinking in Rinar. Uh, Herve? Herve Rinar? Yes. Oh. And he's a good coach, actually. Of Morocco? Of Morocco, yeah, that's yeah. true. Uh, it's not confirmed, it's rumors, but this is one of the names yeah. already. And there's a lot of people saying, talking about Captain Hassan Shahata. I, I, I don't know, but they're talking, mentioned as one of the names. Here is the challenge for us, because with this guy, we already make a success against them. Mm -hmm. After a change, they may be the person the new person understanding, new coach understanding our psychology, our way of uh, play. So we need to focus on that. It's not something good for us as an Egyptian because he was yeah. good for, for us. He was a good coach because we went twice against him. Here I have two questions. Regarding this edition of the AFCON, there was a phenomenon which is the foreign coach. Out of 16 teams, 12 yes. were coached by foreign coaches and yeah. only four by locals. This is a story, and I don't know if this is um, for, uh, for, for the best interest of these teams or no. Second, n to say that they are not in a hurry, meaning that they are going to have their time, yes. meaning that they are going to have such a good scouting for this, meaning that they are not going to hire someone except after collecting all the data required to guarantee that he is going to fit for the position. That, that's exactly right. What you mentioned that... They're thinking rightly. Ghana as a country itself, it's not that, uh, I can say, poor country in terms of having such type of technology and connection to do that. And this is the reason they selected. And they're thinking in the big names now. This is the way, actually, we need to think of selecting the coach. Making it foreign or local, I can say that the person needs to fit with the culture. Because in Egypt, we have a lot of nice foreigners. 
Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the very good guy. The other one, uh, after Martin Yol, is a very big name. But he can't, those people sometimes they can't understand. And the problem we have, not only in Egypt, in all the uh, countries, mm -hmm. that we have a good CV. I remember that in the past, having an interview with a gentleman, something is very important. Sure. Because those people need to understand the life, the challenge in the life, the psychology, the expectation. And this is what happened to Mr. For example, as I as mentioned here, Martin Yol, because Martin Yol, he never, for example, for him to win a cup is something great. Mm -hmm. And he don't know the psychology of the fans for Ali in Egypt. This is actually one of the big mistakes in selecting. In the old, in the old school of selecting it, we are just searching for a CV. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, it's the one... The is totally different. Exactly, yes. exactly. It, it, it needs to include some... For example, why I believe in Rinar a lot? I mean, Rinar, because Rinar is a person have a passion. And he's a person have a very high level of adaptation. So he can fit with a lot of countries. Now. 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 Because no. Hervé Rinar, the French veteran coach, yes. is the most experienced when it comes to the African football. And as far as I know, that he is the only one to win the African Cup yes. of Nations twice with two different exactly. national exactly. teams. Exactly. And so he became an expert in black Africa yeah. and North Africa. Yeah. But the reason for, ha for that, that his, <laughs> forget his tactics. He's a person have a passion. And the passion and have a very high level of adaptation. Very high level of adaptation is something that's very important because it's easy to say, but it's very hard to implement. I think that this is the rule, or, or there are some exceptions which, are, which approve these rules. Uh, for example, I thought that Bob Bradley, for example, the, yeah. the, the American guy, yes. he was that much uh, adapting or feeling good and expressing that he is doing great, but he didn't, he didn't make it with, with us. Maybe it's a, it was the political yes. atmosphere, it was the environment. We, have, we do have so many other factors. But as you've kindly mentioned, to adapt is a very exactly. important exactly. issue. Exactly. And maybe because of this, uh, Mani will just say was the best exactly. when it comes to this. Because he understands the psychology, he yeah. understands the people. He didn't complain because, for example, those people coming from a totally different. And it's easy to figure out in the interview so such type of coach. Mm -hmm. To which level you are able to face this, to which level. And if you find a kind of uh, high expectation, you shouldn't hire him. This is yeah. a very important point. UEFA to limit president term to maximum 12 years. Future UEFA presidents will be limited to a maximum of three terms in a total of 12 years in the job. European soccer's governing body said on Thursday after its executive committee approved a set of governance reforms. 12 years and uh, the the decision is to to have it as a maximum isn't it more than enough it's more than enough and u.s president is eight years this is very I mean, this is very simple uh, do you think that this decision was taken uh, because of the corruption issues regarding what happened with michel platini and the former president of uefa and of course with sep Blatter and his men in fifa that's true to be honest all the decision now in, in, the, in the global football yeah. uh, 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 associations, I can say it's, it's included corruption. Mm -hmm. Even if you have tell now, there is no clean for that because it's, sure. mixed, it's mixed it with business and money. And like the decision for 48 uh, team in the whole cup. 2026. For, exactly. You can imagine. I don't know you how this is going to be played. It's, it's going to it's lose. Fun. 90% of its joy or exactly, its fun. Exactly, exactly. So everything going there for a reason, for a benefit, and it's look, I don't like to say that, but it's a big mafia. It's kind of agreement. I will leave that and you will leave that. I will give you that and you will give that. This is the way actually it's structured there. I'm sorry to tell that, but this is the reality. Compensations. Exactly. You will compensate me for that and you will leave that for you. Tokyo 2020 bid chief quizzed over payments. These were the reports released about this. Japanese prosecutors have questioned the Japan Olympic chief and other officials over millions of dollars in payments made during Tokyo's successful bid to host the 2020 Olympics. Japanese Olympic Committee, uh, uh, Japanese Olympic Committee's president, to uh, Kaziko. Kida, who also led the Tokyo bid, was among those quizzed in recent weeks at the request of the French investigator, um, investigators. Well, here it's once again sports into money, investment, corruption, yes. bids.
tenders, you name it. How do you see this? And how do you see this as a factor where many cities after that are not going to introduce their bids in the first place, not to go under the investigation or to be under the spotlight of investigators or prosecutors of their countries? It's very simple. You need to understand the game to, be, to play it. Mm. And uh, if you understand that it's a kind of uh, people love you, like you, or uh, because you have the pyramid and you have everything, you never win. Mm -hmm. You need to understand it's a business game, and business game means a kind of lobbies, create an a agent inside the game itself, knowing the decision maker and treating it as a pure business case. If you are not believing in that, we will not be in the This is the core of my question. When we here in Egypt will deal with the sports as purely a business issue, when it comes, of course, to organize such a thing. Yes. I don't, I don't like to say that after changing the law, but I can say that we have a people first in the right place who believes in that. We have the environment and culture to, to achieve that. We have a kind of growth in the economy because the sponsor coming from the growth of the economy itself. Mm -hmm. If you're a poor country, there is just sponsors for that. When we have such a metric, safety and security is very important because till now we don't have fans for football in the stadium. And what about media and propaganda? For example, I read after it happened that yesterday there was the draw of the Basketball World Championship which is going to take place here in Egypt in July under 19. Yes. And it was held in Muhammad Ali's palace here in Cairo. It was great and um, many foreigners were there, many international high-ranking officials were there. But who knew about it? Because why we did not, why we do not make shows in such incidents. This, this for me is a big question. Because now in the market we don't have such a lot of competition even between the agencies. And uh, it's the kind of, it starts to be kind of nobly, which is something very strange in Egypt. We encourage the business and the football itself and the industry, but in Egypt it's one, it's one company or two companies competing. And to some extent they're not allowing even for external to compete with them. Mm -hmm. So we don't have such type of, of saying it in the country itself. Plus the agreement need to be different, need to be attached with, 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 with for example, football, basketball in a way or different. Mm -hmm. So if you need the, 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 the back kick, you need to, 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 to give us something in return. Mm -hmm. But we don't have such type of concept. We're still doing it in a mature way, as I can say. And uh, there is a lot of lack of professionalism in that. And it reflects at, at the end of the day negatively for us. And because of this, I should... Um promise my dear viewers that I'm going to follow in detail the visit of Lionel Messi here in Egypt as he is going to be here in a few hours or a few days to participate uh, in our campaign uh, for uh, virus C fighting our battle against virus C but unfortunately uh, State TV um, is not going to be able to make it to Lionel Messi because of what Mr. Mohammed was saying the monopoly of, uh, of, of many, of, of some uh, private uh, companies. Be, be, because in those points, uh, because I have a contact with the people, yeah. the vibe, my message to them, if you'd like to do it, do it like all the journalists and everything, like 30 minutes, yes. and you can make it organized, and why are not making it interesting? It could be part of the deal, by the way. But it's not organized like that. I hope that it makes a success for the trip, because the people bring in, it's, oh, oh, it's a pharmaceutical company, Yep. So it's, it's something that's not into sports, but we need to utilize this event because it can bring us... But by the end of the day, you are talking about a footballer. Yeah, exactly, exactly. By the end of the day, exactly. this is Lionel Messi. Yes, that's true. Some good news. Egypt qualifies for Women's Under-20 World Volleyball Championship in Mexico. Well, Egypt secured a spot at the FIVP Volleyball Women's Under-20 World Championship in Mexico after winning the 2017 African Nations Championships Women's Under-20 at the Olympic Center in Cairo. This was last week. Congratulations, girls. You did great. And we hope that you are going to continue the same way, inshallah, in the World Cup. We are going to end with uh, the story of the day after what happened yesterday. Keeper Ginnish, the hero, as the Malik beat Al-Ahli for the first time in the Egyptian Super Cup.
جول كيبر محمود جنش once again proved the Malik's hero in a shootout as the Malik's defeated Al Ahly 3-1 on penalties in Abu Dhabi on Friday to overcome their arch rivals for the very first time in five Egyptian Super Cup meetings. The third for Al Zamalek and it was going to be the tenth for Al Ahly, but yet congratulations to the White Knights and congratulations to Mahmoud Abderrahim Ginnish. The one who was born on the 10th of July 1987. So we are talking about someone who maybe is going to be the future of our goalkeeping position in our national team. Far from this, we should focus first on the 90 minutes which ended with a scoreless draw. Of the worst yeah. I had when watching a Clasico between Al Ahli and Al Zamalek. Any explanations? Very clear. It's business talks. This, uh, we don't have a plan B for our business. Mm -hmm. And uh, our expectation that Egypt will, be, uh, Egypt will be out of the competition. So let's make it to 10th of February. The max and every single agreed, uh, agreed on that and to confirm it. We shouldn't have in such type of agreement plan P. Okay, if Egypt, for example, reaches the final, like what's happened, what's the plan? Well, a lot of people try to claim, but actually it's confirmed, it. so mm -hmm. they can't change it. And this is the reason. Uh, exhaust people, tired, and everyone not ex excited to the match after we, we already, uh, the, the, the African Cup ended, so this is the normal result for that. Even if you have a fancy uh, field and uh, cameras and uh, fans even, but it's not only enough, because we are talking about human, mm -hmm. and the human need to be treated as a human, and we can see uh, it didn't go well this time. One more reason that there is a lack of preparation from the two coaches, I can say, Helmi mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Hussam al-Badri, because they have time to prepare for that. Uh, in Egypt, uh, the, 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 the break is not a break, or the vacation is not a break. It's a, it's a time paid for you to make a preparation, but they didn't do that. And there's a great difference between the soft training and the hard exactly. training, and there are, there are camps, and I do have many alternatives. I mean, do have many players yes, yeah. uh, playing in one position, and I do have... Exactly. I mean, uh, and I cannot uh, let the uh, fitness coach shoulder all the responsibility oh. for what happened. Yes, that's true. So, I mean, whom I should blame? The players, I mean, is it a joint responsibility between the players and the coaches, or the coaches are more responsible for what happens? First one, we need to blame the person who organized the match at this, at this time, mm. because it's the right, it's wrong time. Mm. Second, we need to blame the coach himself, mm -hmm. said the player. And if we're talking about the coach himself, I mentioned here Hussein Badri as an example, while he achieved very good in the previous period, who well, he didn't prepare for this. He, he went to Dubai before. And the difference between Helmi and Hussein al-Badri is that Ahmed Khinawi was ready. Mm -hmm. But the right decision that Ginnish, not because Ginnish is better, because he's more fit. Mm -hmm. uh, the other guy just came from a long trip and all that. So the result that when you take a right decision... Ahmed Khinawi was ready? Yeah, a lot of people think that he was ready to participate in that. Impossible. Yeah, regarding, regarding the injury he had, it's impossible before one month. Uh, even a lot of news from inside the Malik itself. They're saying that he was ready for that. Any doctor will tell you that... Uh, like two weeks it, at least. No, I mean, this injury in specific, it's, uh, it's nicknamed the deceiving injury. Uh, the guy would feel that he is totally okay and everything is fine and he is training well. And in a split of a second, it can be repeated. Its recurrence is terrible. Yeah, but actually this is the news came from inside that he can play. But Hussein Badri, for example, he did a big mistake. Mm -hmm. You have already players uh, to participate and he didn't. And he's not a risky guy again. Yeah. Hossam, uh, he's, he's a good coach and he mm -hmm. can make a good risk. But be careful because you're going to Africa. Yeah. If you didn't risk, less risk, less gain. Sure. And for example, Kulbali was a person with the name, a new player. Mm -hmm. I admit, there is a lot of options. I mean, Amr um. Gamal, he was the person he can participate in this, but he didn't. I can say that sometimes you need to make adventure at football. Yeah. We are not in science, mm. we are in football. But he didn't. He's going very traditional. And this is the reason. And in the final, I can say, evaluation for him, this is one of the things that to, can be against him. Not yeah. because he, 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 he didn't game the match, because his preparation was very poor. Mm. And this is not expected. What about Helmi? Helmi, he prepared it normal. And the, at the end of the day, 
it's supported by the atmosphere and the environment of the Mac itself because we are going to, I can say, the penalties and it's kind of luck at the end of the day. Sure, even the international uh, body, uh, FIFA, um, uh, whenever it, it ended with yeah. the penalties, it ended, it's, record, it's uh, documented as a draw. Exactly. Exactly. This is this is what's really happening. Exactly. Yeah. But they're winner at the end of the day. Sure. Yeah. And and of course, congratulations to yeah. uh, to all the uh, uh, Zamalek fans and Zamalek players at their return with the trophy. But I I'd like to continue with what we were talking about regarding the performance called because those or many of those players are the core of our national team. Yeah. And unfortunately, what happened so in with Al Masri of Port Said was in Nigeria to play with uh, Iviani, the uh, uh, Nigerian team, and um, uh, in the uh, round number 64, and it ended 1-0 for the Nigerians in uh, just five minutes before the final whistle. And the Egyptians were playing also with this defensive way, as if it is the Cooper syndrome we have. It's the uh, a defensive way, it's uh, uh, trying to all the time not to conceive a goal and to have a goal by luck if it is only a counter-attack, whether it, it, uh, it succeeds or no. Uh, Why? Uh, it's, each coach sh should have his own personality and his own tactics because at the end of the day you need to have a ready player for that and uh, Cooper have his own strategy but sometimes it is not fit over the time. Hassan Shahata have a different strategy and he gained with that. So we shouldn't follow one strategy in doing that. And at the end of the day, I, I, I can say that history remember the, actually the cup owner. Yeah. This is, this is the matter. But is it a coincidence to have just in one week the man of the, the match in, in our, in all, most of, in most of our, um, uh, most of our matches in the AFCON, where Asam al the goalkeeper, Ahmed Hegazi and Ali Gabr, the defense uh, yeah. people. In the Super Cup, it was Ginnish, Ali Gabr, and Tariq Hamid. Today, with Al Masri, it was uh, Buska, the goalkeeper, and Ahmed, um, Ahmed Ayman Mansour, Mansour, also the, the defense, uh, the man of, uh, of, of the defense line. A coincidence? It's an uh, incident, and do not continue a lot because very simple. Uh, they return back to their uh, regular uh, matches, so it will, they can't continue like that. And the most important, again, that the people deal with, in, uh, I can say, the vacation, like it's a vacation. Uh, it's not a preparation, as we, are, can, mm. as we say, so it reflected bad, badly in the performance and, at the end of the day. And we are not expecting a lot f from Masri uh, in that. We expect him maybe to go to, uh, I can say, a final or something like that, because the Confederate itself it's tough competition as sure. well. So uh, we just need him to, to move up in that and having such time, enjoy the journey, the African journey, because we don't know when the They enjoyed the African journey as uh, the Nigerian uh, Football uh, Association did great in organizing the issue and the, the fans, the spectators, the Nigerians were very nice and yeah. they, they, uh, uh, they cheered uh, for the Egyptians after yes, the match. Yes. And <laughs> inshallah, we are going to receive them on the 19th of February, a week from now. So they are going also to that warm by the Egyptians, whether the officials sure. or the citizens. But let's re return back to uh, the Super Cup and to have it in the United Arab Emirates. Since I'm talking about investment and uh, management. Till when we are going to, uh, to have this uh, events, big ones out of Egypt. I, I was so interested when I hear it will be in Saudi Arabia. The mm. concept itself, we are okay with it. That what? we should have. But not every time we need to do it in UAE. That's mm. the thing. We love uh, UAE as a country. We love Abu Dhabi and Dubai. And we have very good. But why we didn't do it in Gawhara Stadium, for example, in Saudi Arabia? In Saudi Arabia? It's very good one. I, I was there before. It's very good one. And everything there. And number, number of, if we're talking about, uh, again, it's kind of sports and fans, you'll find a lot of Egyptians. So you'll find it a full stadium, and you have a player playing there, like Kahraba, for example. Why are you just insisting in, in Emirates? And Ahmed Abd al-Shafi. And Ahmed Abd al-Shafi. Yeah. So business talks here. There's a kind of agreement that mm. we should do it in UAE. I, I, UAE itself, uh, as a country, they did their uh, 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 super uh, uh, competition here in Egypt. I, yes. I, I understand on that. Mm. But who are, who are not exploring? 
By the way, we're not doing it even in a country like UK, you can imagine. Why I'm saying that? Because we'll find the fans there as well. You'll find the, the, the point that we need a fan. Where you go and find? You'll find the people. So we need to do it indifferently. And we need to build a relationship we think internationally. Mm -hmm. We're saying we started. I think this is uh, the back for Ali there, like number four. Because we have AC Roma, if we have Ahli, and you have Ahli, and I think one more Max. So mm. we need to think in an in international way and organizing it. But again, the industry is self-controlled by a kind of monopoly. Yeah. And we encourage the business in, in the football itself with a very high competition. Mm -hmm. Because monopoly means that there is one entity or one person controlling the show. Mm -hmm. And there is a lot of agreement, agreed and such type of that. I don't say that uh, there is any corruption. We don't know that. But we need to be very fair and transparent in making it and we need to encourage we need to encourage even investor to invest in football as a businessman because we need once there is a competition there is a lot of variety there is a lot of options we see we can see a very nice uh, uh, i can say video and uh, 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 playground and everything but at mm. the end of the day the time of the match itself was not right yeah. we, need to, we need to try saudi arabia we need to try for example kuwait itself Mm -hmm. Because those people have the infrastructure to do that. Mm -hmm. We're insisting in UAE for a commercial reason, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, this is very clear. Uh, making a market for, scum, for, for the country is something we did already when they came to Egypt, which mm -hmm. is something in business perspective, something required. Mm -hmm. But why are we going to the same place every time? We need to think different than that. And we need to go again. We, in business and in sports, we need to go in adventure. We, we yeah. need to do a new place, and this, I think, will bring a lot, a lot of value because we can make it with Liverpool, for example, and in return, we ask them to come You know, to many people would think that you are, you are thinking out of the box, but what you're talking about are dreams. I mean, they cannot be implemented on the ground that easy. No, it can, because at the end of the day, those people are talking a business language. Mm -hmm. Okay, you would like to do it here. This is the cost, and what's the win-win situation? So mm -hmm. those people, they're talking business, and they need fans from the Middle East itself. Mm -hmm. and they need to market the country. It's not, but, but they need the smart people to talk to them and convince them. Mm -hmm. And the people understanding the business language. Business language, it's win-win. I'm just not coming to make a market for your country. I'm coming for those reasons, and this is a return. And this is the way, actually, you need to talk about that. And if we are talking about out, out of the book, uh, foreigner, or I can say, the European and American Western in general, even if they are very open-minded to do business. They mm -hmm. don't care your background or your... Religion. It's business by the end it's of the business, day. Exactly. It's money. So, so why? And there is a lot of uh, competition happened even uh, for those clubs in, in a country like Qatar, mm -hmm. in UAE. They bring them to play there yeah. and they go. So if those countries have been printed and they're in terms of football uh, level, they are blue than us. Why are we not doing it like that? This mm -hmm. is a very important question. Uh, that we we need to do. But in principle, it's good to go out. It's good to have a kind of diversity. It's good to engage with another country and give, give, give the chance for the fans outside Egypt mm -hmm. uh, to do that uh, uh, and enjoying the healthy. But it needs to be managed in a different way. And for me, I should have uh, my finals here in Egypt. Okay. I want to go myself and I want to return back to the stadiums. I wanted the fans and the spectators to fill the standings of Cairo International Stadium to have yeah, this uh, image of 120,000 yeah. Egyptians going there, cheering for their clubs. And this is going to be a message to the whole world that we are in love with the sports. This is number one. We are civilized enough and we are in a secure, safe Country. Yeah, but we can make it actually in Egypt, in Cairo Stadium, for example, in the match, in the final cup, for example, uh, for Egypt Cup, for example. Do, do Inshallah. Well, um, by this we come to the end of this very special episode of Score Sheet. Uh, before we go, let me uh, once again thank our dear guest live here in the studio, Mr. Mohammed Misbah, thank our you. sports analyst and our expert in sports thank management. You. Thank you very much, Thanks sir. A lot. And tomorrow is another day, and we are going to be with you, inshallah, next time, same time on Al TV International in another episode of Score Sheet. Till then, on behalf of Dr. Mohammed Rabia, Amr Fathalla, the staff of our studio, Studio 35, and myself, Nermina Abdurrahman, many thanks for watching, always and forever. Assalamu alaikum.